Some notable Nigerian Catholic politicians have appraised Tinubu's 100 days in office. CTV News crew spoke with them in interviews held in Abuja. The report. You see, this is a long journey, a journey of four years. We are talking about 100, 100 days. But again, reforms in the finance sector, which I touched on, the issue of the capital market, which rose phenomenally for the first time in 15 years with the suspension of the governor of the CBN. Number two, the foreign exchange window is not one. There were four that have been collapsed into one to ensure competitiveness and fairness in the business world. Multiple taxation is going, and above all, the removal of fuel subsidy. Everybody knew it was a scam, but the courage to remove was not there. That's what you, uh, President Bonla Tinumbu has removed that subsidy. And palliatives have been put in place to check the pains that the citizens are going through. But these are pains of birth of a baby. As soon as the baby is out, the pains are over. It's a temporary issue. There's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. What do we expect a lot? Uh, if you look at it, on some of the things that are already, I have not means to have information, but they are beginning already to reel out some of the achievements of this present government in the last hundred days. We've done, we've done a lot. Even to remove subsidy is not something that was easy. People look at it as a simple thing. It is this process of subsidy that when people start getting seeing that people were happy, that they wish that this thing was removed since. We've done it, and some of it is the palliatives, employment opportunities that you will see that uh, a lot of people will get. It's down the line. But they should remain uh, prayerful. They should be patient with the president, President Bola Ahmed Tunibu, and that the current economic travails we are passing through did not get to us in a day or two or in a year. And that this administration is still very young, and it's barely 100 days old in office, and that he has taken the right steps in the right direction. It would have been very difficult for Nigeria to survive in the next five years using 96% of what he collects on a monthly basis to service debts. And so the country was heavily indebted over the years as a result of dwindling economic fortunes, and of course insecurity and so many things. And so for this president to tackle it, Nigerians have to be patient and also to, for them to know that we also have constituents. And then our constituents, we, we, we feel the same way they feel. So nobody, when it rains, it rains on all roofs. So when the economy is good, everybody enjoys. When the economy is bad, people must endure. But the major thing there is to be patient. The best, there's nothing like any other option than democracy. Because it's a government that when you speak, the government will listen. Anything outside that, your voice is useless. So Nigerians must learn. It's only somebody who has not experienced war that will look for war. When war comes, there is no big man. There is no, there is no small man. <laughs> Everybody feels that the bullet does not choose where it hits. So for me, I believe that we should be patient with the administration, which is also pray for the administration. And then, of course, the administration is already putting things in place that will resolve in the next few months the current economic travels, particularly the fuel crisis, and also a transportation costs, and of course the need for increased salary in, in terms of workers and uh, emoluments. And there, or there is also need to put in place palliatives such as uh, uh, means of transportation that will alleviate the sufferings of people, whilst at the same time tackling the insecurity situation so that people can get back to the farm and produce food, so that we can eat what we produce and produce what we eat. It's very important. And all, that cannot be done unless all hands are on deck. I gave an example of uh, people that we see cutting away this uh, iron that covers uh, the various uh, manholes on the road. That is a sign of somebody who is uh, either mentally deranged because you are causing accident. It could even be your wife or your child that will die after you have taken those things and exposed those holes. So the Nigerians must learn to know that 
government facilities are not meant for government. The facilities are meant for all, and they are put for, for your use. And even as a governor, I kept telling my people, even if it's a transformer that they put in your community, own that transformer. Don't see somebody vandalizing the transformer and you walk away, because eventually it will affect your house. You will end up without electricity. So we must learn to own what government is doing and then be, realize that it is us. And it is our own money. It's our common patrimony. It's our common patrimony. And it's not something that you would think this, uh, this government facility belongs to government. The facility belongs to all of us. And the way the outsider sees us is the way we maintain those facilities. So I will call on all Nigerians to join hands with the government, be patient with the government, pray for the government, and then, of course, be careful with the social media. The social media is garbage in and garbage out.